Hi, I'm Stevie C and the Boys to Be. I've been asked to repair even more of these RGBW U King power cans, so I thought I'd try to do a quicker video showing what I've found to be the best technique so far. One of these power cans has already been repaired by me, so I'm hoping it's not a chip I've replaced previously that's failed. It's only the white LED sources in each that have failed this time. Red, green and blue all test OK. I'll be recording the voiceover separately to the on-screen action as I sometimes do, and using jump cuts in the edit as I frequently do, but I'll have a timer running to show just how little time this repair method takes. Here goes. The technique I'm using to find the faulty LED is using the inbuilt dimmer to run the LEDs as low as possible, then using the ammeter to short out each chip in turn until I find the rolled chip, then using a sharpie to mark it and then killing the power so I can work on it. What I think works best for me is using the cheapy snips to clip out the faulty LED, then using the high power soldering iron to remove the remnants of the legs. Finally, using IPA solvent on some bog roll to clean the schmoo off the pad. Then it's just a case of applying fresh heatsink compound, aligning the LED correctly using a multimeter set to continuity, gently aligning it with the pads, soldering one leg as an anchor point with a precision iron while applying pressure to mate the LED to the PCB as flush as possible then doing the same with a wag on the opposite side, and then soldering the remaining pins, before finally testing, and then reassembling and repeating with the other par cans. The 15 minutes on the timer assumes it's only one group of LEDs out, and only one LED at fault, and that it's not an intermittent fault like we saw in the previous video. But you get the idea. I've only been able to repair two out of the four par cans due to having less LED chips in stock than I thought, but at least I've been able to put another video together. So as you probably saw, it wasn't the same LED that had failed this time, we know this because I'd used a bit too much heatsink compound, and the failed LED had the standard factory amount of compound, ranging from very little to the square root of sod all. You'll be able to see a difference between the two styles of LED. The supplied factory ones have the white source in the middle, with the red, green and blue around the outside. Whereas in the chips I've supplied, the red, green, blue and white dyes all have equally prominent spacing. When I went looking on AliExpress, the LED chips with the white in the center and the RGB surrounding only came as a 4 watt chip. For 12 watts, it kinda has to be the square ones that look round. Of course, I probably haven't found the correct chips yet. This just makes me wonder what power the supply chips actually run at inside the power can. It's an idea for a future video, so subscribe if you haven't already. I'm aware that there are entire PCB assemblies available on AliExpress but then you have to factor in the time to swap out the heatsink and the significantly larger amount of heatsink compound you'd want to apply. Anywho, that's them fixed and soon to be returned to their owner pending a full test. Click like if you liked this video, share with your friends or technical co-workers, subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, thanks for watching. Yeah, don't show this, mate.